Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He have done great things for us. Thank you, Jesus. We can just look back over our lives and we can just think. Look how God allowed us to be here today. Praise the Lord. We have so much to thank the Lord for. How he has kept minds. He has taken care of us in our bodies. Thank you. Just so many things. He has given us true messengers. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He done showed us the difference. Thank you, Jesus, in right and wrong. Good and evil. Praise the Lord. Ain't God good, saints? Praise the Lord. He has done great things for us. Truly, we honor the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I want God to wash me. Praise the Lord. We thank God for all our wonderful visitors. Praise the Lord. We thank God for, thank you, Jesus. We never want to forget what God has done. We always thank God for our wonderful mother. Praise the Lord. I tell you, my mind always go back to the Albany Mall, and I did not know her. Praise the Lord. All I knew was what they said. Sister Wright. Praise the Lord. But God did something for me that day in the Albany Mall. And I never forget, and I never get mixed up. Praise the Lord. Isn't that wonderful, God? Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. We thank God for always for our brother Adrian. I call him Brother Adrian. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. We just thank God for all that he has done. We're going to um, allow Brother Adrian to give us a consecrated song, and then we're going to continue on with our service. Good to be here, saints. Yeah. Truly, God has done great things. Yeah. Going to try a little bit of this song. I need the back home saints Lord help me to never take it for granted oh I need Father, praise this God and purify us as we come before your throne. 
Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we come this afternoon, it's with thanksgiving in our hearts for all the wonderful and marvelous things that you've done. God, I want to tell you, thank you for allowing your son to die on the cross of Calvary for our sin and in our place. And we want to tell you, thank you for what Calvary made possible for sinners such as we were at one time, those of us that accepted you as Lord and Savior. And God, we are in honor you just for allowing us to walk back through the doors one more time. It's because of your grace and your mercy that we're here standing, sitting, however we're here, it's because of you. And we just want to tell you thank you. Thank you for being the great God that you are. And we, Lord, we want to tell you thank you for how you watched over our children during the past school year. And asking the Lord Jesus to continue to watch over them during the summer months and watch over us as well. And God, we invite you to come and be with us as we go through our service on today. And Lord God, let your presence be known. And we praise you and we thank you for all that you continue to do. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Thank God so much for this song. Thank God for this place. This place is the reason why my blinded eyes can now see. Just remember what God has done for me. When I say it'll wake you up, it will wake you up in every area that sleep. Cause you know, I know I don't deserve it. But I thank God for this place. Jesus, confess 
your sin. Get down on your knees and tell them I need you. I can't do nothing with this old flesh. The Spirit of God will lead and guide me. I'm so glad for the Spirit of God. I'm so glad for the Spirit of God. It will come and rescue you. That's why I love this place. I can't even explain how much I love it. I'll be here all night, all week, all year. But God, I want you to know I love this place. Thank you for bringing me back. Thank you for bringing me back. So don't you let nothing take my praise. Don't you let nothing come between me and you. Don't you let nothing come between me and you. This is about me and you. I'm so glad you let me know that. This is about me and you. And you've been faithful. You've been righteous. You've been better than good. That's why I love this place. That's why I'm going to praise him in this place. Tell God, thank you for all that he's done. Thanking God for our young children and the young people. Amen. Thank God for them, what he's done for them. And thank God for where he has placed you all. Amen. We are proud of you and what you're wanting to do and wanting to strive for. We want God to continue to bless you. Certainly tell God, thank you again for all of the, I was thinking about Caravia's testimony, wonderful testimony, Sabrina, so many wonderful testimonies. Amen. Honor God for what he's done. And thank God for how he's been able to work and accomplish those things in the lives of the individuals that testified on the day. And as our ushers come, let us act in accordance. We are
We want to tell you thank you, God, for this moment in time. We want to tell you thank you for giving us the privilege to be able to come out and assemble ourselves each other once again. God, we ask in the name of Jesus your blessing upon this offering that we have received on today. We ask, God, that you touch it and bless it, multiply it and use it as you see fit. Do it all, God, for your honor, for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray and I thank you. Amen. Again, we want to praise God for our prayer hour. Certainly want to tell God thank you for this time and all the prayers. Lord, have mercy that have gone up on our behalf. The prayers that have us covered, that has covered our children, our grandchildren, and that keep us day by day. We honor God for those prayers. And we want to look to the Lord at this time as we go before his throne, in gra throne of grace in prayer. Watch us, Father. Purify our hearts and our minds and our soul as we come before your throne on this afternoon. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, as we come approaching your throne on behalf of the name on this prayer list, you've heard them read and you know everybody's situation, you know everything about everyone on this prayer list, you know everything about everyone here in my presence. And God, in that we're asking you, we're looking to you, by your power and by your spirit, to bless the individuals that's listed on this prayer list and that are listed here and standing here in my presence as well. Father God, we first want to tell you thank you for all that you've done down through the years. Thank you for bringing our children through another school year. Thank you for keeping the teachers that taught them, the teachers that are here present, God. Thank you for keeping them. Thank you for keeping our school halls safe from that mass gunman and that person that could have come in there just even with a knife and different things, God. We want to tell you thank you. We've heard about the different bomb threats, but God, you didn't allow no bombs to go off. So we want to tell you thank you just for that. And God, we ask in the name of Jesus, through your kindness and grace and mercy to us, help us to bow in your presence, knowing we're so undeserving of the things that you do. And God, we ask also as you bless us here that you go and you bless the names and the persons on this prayer list. My name wasn't here one day, but my name was yet called because of this time one, many years ago during the prayer hour. It was said, Lord, bring in the young people. And you stirred the bottom of the ocean, that place called Babylon, that religious world. And you brought me out, and you brought me up, and you brought me in. And I want to tell you thank you. God, for that soul that's searching, that's looking for something in this world but don't know what it is that they need. I was there one day, and I heard someone say this today, that nothing can fill that void but you alone. So, God, in the name of Jesus. Go fill that empty void like you did for me one day. I wanted something, but I didn't know what I needed. I was thinking I needed education. I thought I needed school. I thought I needed money. But, God, I found out I needed Jesus in my life. Thank you. For that soul that's wandering today, go bless that wandering soul. Bring him in out of the rain before it's eternally too late. And, God, if you can find one in Babylon like you found me, Bring them home before it's eternally too late. And God searched his audience also. 
We may be in truth, but if truth in us. If truth is not in us, open our hearts, open our minds, open our eyes, open our ears. Move one more time so we can hear from on high as you speak to our hearts. Do it for your honor and for your glory, God. And we'll forever praise you. You're the awesome God that you are. You spoke one day. You said, let there be light. And it said, and there came light. But I found out it wasn't the light of the sun, but it was just because you said, let there be light. It lit up the sky. So come, God, through your word one more time. Break down that heart that needs to hear. Do it for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray and I do thank you. Amen.
Business out with us. Our scripture this, this afternoon is coming from Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18. We'll start reading in verse 18, verses 18, 19, and 20. I don't know it well enough, Sister Monique, to try to grab hold to it. <laughs> but I love that song. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Isaiah chapter 1. We'll start reading in verse 18. Isaiah chapter 1, we're starting at verse 18, and it reads as follow. Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Verse 19, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Verse 20. But if you refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. You can be a benefactor, or you can be on the recipient on the losing end. The choice is yours. But we tell God, thank you for that life-changing grace that he gives to man when they accept him as Lord and Savior. Back into the hands of the choir.
thine glory above the heavens, the moon and the stars. Thou hast ordained what is man that thou art. certainly tell God thank you for what he continues to do for our children and we honor God just for allowing us all to be here one more time amen thanking God for all of our visitors indeed our pleasure to have you here today and any time that we have a service we want you to feel free and welcome to be here with us and I also want to recognize as it was already done so my friend Adrian Wright thank God for him being here as well amen just thank God for all of our visitors Thank God once again. Let us look to the Lord in a word of prayer. I'm going to ask you at this time if you're able to stand as we go before the throne of grace. Watch us, God. Father God, once again, as we come, Lord, as with thanksgiving in our hearts for all that you've done, 
And God, prepare our hearts and our minds and our souls as we enter into your most precious and your holy word. And God, we ask that you speak to us and show us the things that we need to see. Help us to be thankful and grateful for all that you've done and all that you continue to do for us in such a late and dark hour. We honor you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Turning your Bibles to Titus chapter 2. Titus 2, chapter 2. And verse 11. Titus chapter 2. And verse 11. Titus chapter 2 and verse 11. Titus chapter 2 and verse 11. And it reads as follows. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men. Thank God for that reading of his word. And we thank God from that verse of scripture there. My subject today is the grace of God. The grace of God. We thank God for his amazing grace. And we thank God for his grace and all that it enables in it man to receive as a result of the receiving the grace of God that he gives to us. The grace of God encompasses and does a lot for man. And we see through the grace of God and from we look at when we see his grace in our lives, we realize we are so undeserving of what he has done for us. Definition of grace is this, favor or kindness shown without regard to the worth or merit of the one who receives it. And in spite of what that same person deserves, that's, that's God's grace. If you think about it, every human being born came into this world a sinner. We were born in sin and we were shaped in iniquity. From the age of accountability, once you've reached that age. If you add no more S-I-N-S, sins to sin, S-I-N, because remember we were born in sin, you still would need God's amazing grace in your life. Because without his grace, no man can be saved. Without his grace, all are doomed and headed for the lake of fire. So we praise God and we thank him for the grace of God that comes our way. Amen? Amen. Remember, it's favor or kindness shown without regard to the worth or merit of the one who receives it, and in spite of what that same person deserves. When I think about us collectively as a whole, there are things some of us got into at an early age that another may not have gotten into. But regardless of what you didn't get into, or what you got into, we still need God's grace because we came into this world a sinner and we needed to be saved. Amen? So we want to tell God, thank you for his grace. And it tells us, read for me, Carolyn, verse 11. For the grace of God have, that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. You see what grace done? Grace brought salvation our way. We couldn't do nothing to earn it. We couldn't do nothing to, to make God give it to us. Why? We were already separated due to sin in our lives. But his kindness, his graciousness towards us, it made it possible. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. It appeared when G and it makes it appearances in this way. It provides for all mankind a way to have salvation. And that is through the finished work of Calvary with the Lord done on the cross. Through his death, burial, and resurrection, he enables us to have salvation. And I want to tell him thank you that it appeared unto me. Because Lord knows, I'm telling you, when you're where I was, a religious hypocrite, and you're stuck deep in religion, you're thinking and you have in your mind form because of what you've been fed and what you've been given. I'm on my way to heaven. But I found out I was nowhere on my way to heaven. I was on my way to hell. 
because I had never changed course. The grace of God, when it appears unto a person and they receive it, it changes your eternal destiny and it changes you. And if you have never been changed, not you make the change, but if God has never changed you, you're still headed in the wrong direction. But grace comes not to condemn us, but to show us who we are and that we need Christ in our life so we don't have to continue on this path of destruction. I want to tell God, thank you again for the grace of God. If I say it again, for the grace of God that bringing salvation has appeared to all men. What does it do, verse 12? Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. I tell you, when I, again, I heard uh, somebody was saying it, look, I, when they said uh, they, God allowed him, I think it was brother here, the Lord allowed him to sit long enough that he could finally hear. And I want to tell God, thank you, he done the same for me. It's something when you come in with your mind already fixed that you have it. Thank you, Jesus. You hear what I say? That you have it. Not God gave it to you, but that you had it. It's something when you come in with your mind fixed, you need to vomit up all that mess so God can finally speak to your heart and show you who you are. Teaching us that denying ungodliness, what is ungodliness? Ungodliness is anything that does not bring praise, adoration, or an honor to God certainly brings, dis dis and it brings uh, disgrace and dishonor upon his name. Therefore, anything that is not godly and to God's glory, whatsoever it may be, can be classified under ungodliness. Thank God for the truth of the word of God because it taught some of us fornication is wrong. Because you think about it, your mind be so fixed and your mind be so twisted Individuals will say, well, I'm not married, and they're not married, so we're not wrong. But God says fornication is wrong. Adultery is wrong. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. We'll run from man trying to hide the fact of these things, but we think nothing that a holy and righteous God is watching us and seeing us commit all these ungodly acts. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust. Now, worldly lust is more than just sex. Amen. Your desire for something such as money, fame, fortune, those things can be wrong in your pursuit of them. Amen. Because you put them, you put those things before God. Worldly lust. We should live soberly, meaning in this present world, we should live right. And that's what grace does for us. It teaches a young person, it teaches an old person that sin, fornication, adultery, all those things are wrong. And you think about it when somebody is, is not sober, they staggering all over the place. And you don't have to be drunk with alcohol to stagger. You can be drunk in your pursuit of things in this world. You can be drunk in your pursuit of things for yourself. You can be drunk in things thinking that, well, I want to pursue this, in, but God is not in the will of God. All those things and have you drunk. Thank you, Jesus, as you pursue those things and you're not sober. But I want to tell God, thank you for the grace of God because it's sober. it sobers you. It has you thinking right. It has you seeing right. It has you having an understanding that the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life. And it has you knowing that one day soon I will have to stand before him and give an account to him of the life that I've lived here and the life that I'm living now. It teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. And guess what? We know it is not through our power, but through the power of God and the grace that he gives to us. Our power showed us we were punched drunk. We were all over the place in the things that were causing us and pushing us and leading us and directing us to the lake of fire. But when we really, but those who have accepted Jesus Christ into your life as Lord and Savior, when you straightened up and walked right, it was after Christ came into your life. I know I did. And I want to tell God, thank you, he came my way. I had no idea. I wasn't a drinker before I came into truth. Now, I was old enough. No, I wasn't. I wasn't old enough at the time. I remember doing things because I had a beard early. And my friends, you know, we would do things that wasn't right. And I, I would be the one buying the beard because I looked older, if you will. But I want to tell God, thank you. He allowed me to know all those things are unrighteousness. 
all those things had me punched drunk in sin, had me staggering all over the place, had me on my way to the lake of fire. But I want to tell him thank you that someone could stand and teach concerning the grace of God. The grace of God is able to change lives once this is accepted. The grace of God is able to stabilize your mind. The grace of God is able to help you to see things right. The grace of God is, is able you to see and understand the things in this world, the lust of this world, the pleasures of this world, all those things work against the grace of God and is counteractive and counterproductive for us to chase after it and think I can have that and have God at the same time. He said, no man can serve two masters. You'll love the one and hate the other. I want to tell God, thank you that he brought me to a place that I can be taught concerning the righteousness of God. Amen. You don't know you're headed in the wrong direction unless someone tells you you're going wrong. When you look into the world, you think you're headed right because everyone, the majority, is heading that direction. Here's what the word of God says. He said, for many will say to me in that day, many being most, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And I named on many wonderful works and all these different things they're going to ask, say to God. Then he said, then will I profess unto them. I never, key word, knew you. So that shows the bulk of the world, the most people in the world, are headed in the wrong direction. So when you judge yourself based on the world, it looks like you're going in the wrong direction. But I want to tell God, thank you. The grace of God came my way. The grace of God stabilized me. Amen. Live, right, live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Looking for that blessed hope. Listen, salvation is not something that we can earn or merit. It can be received only as a gift of grace. Grace, however, must be accompanied by faith. You must believe that God is in order to receive his grace. Faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. Amen? So grace, however, must be accompanied by faith. The only way of salvation for any person is through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is applied to human, human beings by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does the work. The Holy Spirit brings us to us. The Holy Spirit con convicts us. The Holy Spirit opens our eyes. The Holy Spirit shows us. It leads us. It guides us. It directs us. And even after salvation, it does the work for us. Amen? It doesn't make us do it. It calls us to do it. The Spirit is the one who binds Christ to his people so that they receive forgiveness, adoration to sonship, S-O-N, S-H-I-P, sonship, and newness of life, as well as every spiritual gift of grace. And I want to tell God, thank you. If it wasn't for grace, we can't be changed. Have you been changed in your heart? Have God come into your life and change you from that old man that you used to be to that new creature in Christ Jesus? If he has, it's not you that have done it, not I that did it. It's God through his son, Jesus Christ, and the gift of grace that he gave to us. The word tells us, for by grace are you saved, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. But don't you know this is the sad thing that saddens me sometimes when I think about it? God will come to some, and he will give to them and present to them, open their eyes well enough that they see that they are a sinner, touch their heart and soften it long enough that they will see, I need to repent. And he will present to them his grace. But they will turn around because they love the pleasures of this world more than they love their own soul being saved. Isn't that sad? But you can sit in truth and hold on to you and walk away from it just as well. So don't walk away from it when God hands it to you. I behoove you and I beg of you, if God comes your way with it, his saving grace, grab hold to it. Amen? Let him change you. Let him make you a true believer. Let him wrap you in his love and do for you what you can't do for yourself. Let him give you the grace of God that changes us internally. Amen? Verse 13 again for me. Looking for that blessed hope 
and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what grace teaches us. Now, we don't stand sky watching or gazing. We stand, we, we look, looking for that, uh, for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We look through our daily living, living godly. You understand? We watch and we wait in the way that we live. Uh, that uh, no, I was thinking about the ungodliness. You think about how, thank God for this ministry again, I want to say that in, in teaching concerning ways. I, I've never heard anybody still to this day say anything concerning ways. I've you learned and I've learned that you being short of patience, that's you. That's right. hmm? that's right. You with the snappy attitude, that's you. That's right. Huh? Being lazy. All those things are ungodly. But this ministry have taught me and have taught so many others, we can't be lazy. Amen? Right. It's a sin to be lazy. Because if you're lazy, you're nasty. Right. And God don't want us to treat what he gives us that way. Amen? But thank God for what he has given to us and shown to us and, and what grace does for us. Hold here and go to Romans chapter 5. Romans 5, Romans 5 and verse 2, Romans chapter 5 and verse 2, go ahead. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Amen. We have something to rejoice about when you have received God's grace. He said, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace. The access to God's grace is the privilege of all true believers. You hear what I say? Access to God's grace is the privilege of all true believers. We have the freedom to enter his presence at all times. And that freedom comes through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. After you become a true believer, he sits on the right hand of the Father, and he intercedes for you and I and make intercessions for when we give a prayer. His golden scepter is always extended to us. You remember Esther? When she was going in before the king, she said that if, the, if he did not extend the scepter to her, she could die. Remember, we, you and I, we're not fit in, of, and by ourselves to go before God's presence. But because of Jesus Christ and what he has done through his shed blood, it gives us access to be able to enter into the presence of God. And in that, his scepter, his golden scepter, is always extended to us. And I want to tell God, thank you for what are everything else that grace gives us, uh, 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 extends to us. It extends to us mercy. It extends to us patience. It extends to us long suffering. It extends to us kindness. It extends to us things that we were so undeserving of. But because someone stood in the gap and someone taught to us the grace of God and what it brings to man, when man sees him or herself, it enables us to receive Jesus Christ into our life as Lord and Savior. I want to tell him thank you that what he has done for me. Amen. Anything that does not bring praise, adoration, and honor to God certainly brings disgrace and dishonor upon his name. And I was living a life that brought all those things against and upon the name of Christ. But grace, so undeserving, grace, thank you, Jesus. Grace found me. Grace brought me. The Spirit of God led me. Someone's prayer shook the bowels of Babylon. Because, see, we, when you think about it, you lock the door on yourself because you're chasing sin. You close the doors on opportunities because you want your name famous. You want your fame. You want your fortune. You go after all these worldly lusts. And someone that stood and knows we need grace to change our destiny. Because of that, some of us no longer headed in that wrong direction. And I want to tell God, thank you that he came my way. Thank God for his redeeming power. Christ does the redeeming, but we must do the believing. If you never believe, he can't redeem you. 
Sister brought out in her testimony. And thank God for what he's done for one on 2018. Thank you, Jesus. When you believe Christ and what he shows you about you, he didn't show me about my brother, my sister, my mother, my father. He showed me about Bradford. He showed me that Sunday I came and I gave my life to Christ in Lee County. God showed me through a movie as I stood and after the message went forth and the invitation was given. I saw I was on my way to hell. And yet I was professing salvation but was not possessing the Holy Spirit that you can only receive through the grace of God. But God, through his grace, decided I'm not going to give you what you deserve. I'm going to give you something that you don't deserve. I'm going to bless you beyond measure. I'm going to open your eyes to who you are. And I'm going to bring you from the bowels of Babylon. I had no idea how deep I was in sin. I had no idea who I was, where I was headed, and all those th things that I thought about myself. He washed them away. I found myself standing void of his spirit, void of his grace, and void of his mercy. But I simply said when he showed me, and I was so overwhelmed with what he showed me, I said, I just want to be saved. Do you know what he did? He saved me. If you come knowing that you have a great need, that you cannot satisfy yourself, I tried, people. You hear what I say? I tried. I remember one night going back to the barracks. At the time, I was stationed in the military. And I'm driving up to the barracks, and I'm looking for a parking space. It was late. But as I'm driving up to the barracks, and I'm looking, I'm, I'm like, I said, something is missing. Something is wrong. And, and I'm, I'm telling you, I had tried prior to that to fill it with different things. But I found out. After I received the grace of God, the gift of salvation, through the faith that comes with it, I found out one day as I was, after I'd given my life to Christ, it looked like he brought it back to me. And I said, ooh, that void is not there. I was satisfied. You hear what I say? I didn't have no longer chase after women. I didn't no longer have to go to the in club, Sister Sheila. On base, I was satisfied in Jesus for what he has done for me. I'm trying to tell you, and look, the gray wasn't there and the hair was still there. But what I'm showing to you, God will satisfy that young person. God will satisfy that old person. God satisfies human beings if they see their need for a savior and the grace of God to come into their life. But the thing be, we don't want it. And here's why. Man love darkness rather than light. It is some moral sin you're still trying to hold on to or chase after and satisfy yourself in that. But day after day, time after the time, you find yourself. Even what you're chasing after, it brings tears to your eyes. It breaks your own heart. It breaks all your morals. It calls you to feel, why do I continue to put myself in this cycle that I keep going down and down and down? But God is saying, I got a grace, I got a gift, but you got to want my gift. I'm not going to force it upon you. You must receive it by faith. And if you do so, God will transform your life. Look and go back to uh, Titus 2 and reread verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That shows to us grace enables the Christian, the true believer, to know and to believe by faith that Christ is coming back again the second time. And he's coming back for a church with no spots or no wrinkle. And here's the thing for those who have not become true believers. When the Lord appears the second time, he's not coming back to the earth. The scripture lets us know he's going to call for the saints to meet him in the air. They say that the last trump, that the sound of the trump, the dead in Christ will rise first. And then we which are alive and remain, the we are not all inclusive. The we just means those who have received the grace of God. The we that have received the grace of God, we're going to be caught up together with them in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And those that are left in this world, 
You're going to be left in this world with the Antichrist. You're going to be left in this world doomed and destined for an eternity in the lake of fire. But God is saying while the blood is running warm, if I can speak to your heart, and if I can speak to you to, to you know and show to you that you're a sinner, I'm giving you something that will cause you to be able to meet me in the air. I would have been so shocked to find myself. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. I'm glad somebody taught me yes. to deny unworldly lust. I'm glad somebody taught me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Because in their teaching me, it sobered me up. I was no longer staggering around because what religion told me. Religion will tell you if you've been water baptized, you, you've got things right with Christ. But someone teaching me to deny ungodliness showed me, didn't matter how many times, you can be baptized in the Jordan River. If you don't have Christ in you, the hope of glory, you're destined for the lake of flames. Tell God, thank you for changing that for me. Amen. Verse 14, let's read what he done for us further. Who gave himself for us. Didn't he do that? Yes. Didn't he go on the cross and die for your sins? Yes. Didn't he go on the cross and die for my sins? Yes. Who gave himself for us. That what? That he might redeem us from all iniquity. Did he take sin out your life when he brought you in? Yes. I know he took it out of mine. Amen. Who gave himself for us. That he might redeem us from all iniquity. And what? And purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. And you can tell you've become a peculiar person after you've given Christ your life in this. This is one of the evidence you can try to look for. Are everybody that was for you, as you stand for Christ and live for Christ, you'll find out they push you to the side. You know there's been a change, and it's a change that you didn't bring about. And I want to tell God thanks for the change. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people Zealous of good works. We don't work for salvation, but we work because of salvation. We show our faith through that. But I want to tell God thank you for the grace of God that came my way. Go, to, go now to uh, 1 John chapter 1. I'm going to be closing here. 1 John chapter 1. First John chapter 1. We're going to read verse 8. First John chapter 1, verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Thought about that individual that's never wrong. Hmm? If you're never wrong, you'll never see you need God's grace. Thank you, Jesus. And it says here, if we say that we have no sin, that's what that person is saying, if they're never wrong. You're saying that you have no sin. It says we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But grace comes to sober your mind. Grace comes so you don't be drunk in your own thoughts. Grace comes to show you who you are and what you need from Christ. Verse 9. If we confess our sins, uh -huh. he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I want to tell him thank you. That grace gave me an opportunity one day by faith to confess my sins, and he was faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me, not from some or three quarters or one eighth, but from all of my unrighteousness. And if you have not received that from Christ, he's saying to you today, I have grace that I want to give to you, but you must receive it by faith so I can do for you what you can't do for yourself. Let me save your soul and write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. If God has been able to speak to your heart today, we invite you to come and let him do for you what you can't do for yourself. Let him give to you the gift of salvation and let him write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. We invite you to ask the audience to stand at this time.
That's something to celebrate. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Amen. 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 As he bow his head to the back, I want God to bless him. Amen. Amen. That's something to celebrate. When a young man comes out of sin and want to give their life to Christ. That's something to shout about. Amen. We certainly tell God thank you for all those who came up on today. And at this time, we're going to turn it into the hands of our brothers as they come.
true word of God. That he gave to a true vessel. That he gave us a true vessel. For us, for our eyes to open. And I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I can be here. All day. All night. Stop! 